Hi everyone, in this video we're going to discuss about integration by partial fractions. So in the form of the fraction of polynomials Px over Qx, when it cannot solve by formula to get ln, we have to express it in partial fraction before the integration is attempted. So we have to refresh back and revise back our partial fraction in semester 1. For example, when we have two different factors, we will separate the factor one by one in order to find its partial fractions. When we have a repeating factor, the first factor will be power of 1 and then the second factor will be square. When we have a quadratic factor, so the numerator part here we have to put a linear numerator which is bx plus c. So this is our basic on partial fractions. So now let us look at some example. Let's say we want to integrate 2 over x 1 minus x dx. So notice that we cannot integrate this by formula because when we have fx as a denominator function x minus x squared, when I differentiate, I supposed to get 1 minus 2x at numerator. So therefore, for this case, we cannot get the numerator exactly in the differentiate function here. So this means that this form of the questions does not fulfill our criteria of the formula. So that's why we need our technique of integration by partial fraction so that we express our fraction to be a simple fraction and then we can proceed our integrations. Therefore, the first step, we will take out the fractions in order to express it in partial fraction. For this denominator factor, notice that we have two different factors. So our partial fraction number one will be x. Another partial fraction factor will be 1 minus x. For those linear factor, numerator will become constant. For this denominator linear, for numerator, it will become a constant also. Then, 2 will be equal to a times 1 minus x plus b times x. From here, we need to find out what is our a and b so that for this complicated fraction, we can express in partial fraction and we can integrate this. In order to find our a and b, we can let our s to be 0. So we can get a. Then we let our x to be another of the roots, which is equals to 1. So we can get our b. Therefore, these fractions can be expressed in 2 over x, where a is 2, b also 2. 2 over 1 minus x. Then we're going to integrate these fractions. For integrate 2 over x 1 minus x dx, now we can express it in partial fraction, which is 2 over x plus 2 over 1 minus x dx. From here, notice that our 2 can be factorized out in order to simplify our function. Then we can integrate these questions. For 1 over x, we can integrate 1 over x, which is equal to ln x which is our formula, ln. For this part, when our fx is 1 minus x, then when we differentiate it, it should be getting negative 1. So here, we supposed to times negative 1 outside divided by negative 1 for these integrations. Therefore, now we can integrate it for integrate 1 over x, we get ln x. And then for this, positive negative becomes the coefficient of negative ln 1 minus x. Finally, plus c. Because of ln minus ln, we can simplify it as ln x over 1 minus x plus c. So that's all. Next, we're going to discuss integrate x over 2 plus x squared dx. So you can notice that 
For this factor, they are repeating factor. Therefore, let us revise our repeating factor in doing partial fractions. So the first factor, we will put 2 plus x. And for second partial fraction here, we will repeat this factor become squared. You can see this factor is linear, so numerator will be constant. Inside here, this is a linear factor, it's not a quadratic factor, it's a linear factor, so here will be a constant. When we equate the numerator, x need to times 2 plus x, but for b, it is not necessary to time anything because 2 plus x squared is similar for this denominator. Now we're going to let to find our a and b. So let x equals to negative 2. Negative 2 equals to b. Then we let x equals to 0. 2a plus b. Where we found our b, which is negative 2. So 2 equals to 2a. a equals to 1. So finally, write back our fraction in partial fashion where a is 1, where b is negative 2. Therefore, when you want to integrate these fractions, then we will integrate its partial fraction form. So for this fraction, we will test with our formula where the denominator is fx. And when we differentiate it, it is 1. So this is fx at prime x. It will get us the formula of ln fx. For this, we will pull out the denominator as this 2 can be power of negative. Then only we integrate. So one more step. When everything ready to integrate, so we will integrate in a, in a sentence here. So this will be ln 2 plus x because this is our fx and this is our f prime x. For this, this is our formula number 3 where for this bracket of x, we will power plus 1 over the new power and then the coefficient of x is 1 plus c. So finally, integrate 2 plus non x, negative negative become positive 2 over this. For question number 3, notice that when you want to integrate this fraction, we want to express it in partial fraction. This is our linear factor, but this is our quadratic factor. Quadratic factor means it cannot be factorized. So if you forget your partial fraction, Methods, you can refer back my video in chapter 6, semester 1. They have a step to teach you how to do your partial fractions. For these questions, we are going to take out our fractions. Then we are going to express it in partial fashion, where the first factor is x plus 1. Then the second factor is x squared plus 6, which is a quadratic factor. When the linear factor at denominator, numerator will be a constant. When your denominator is a quadratic, then numerator will be a linear, which is px plus c. Then we are going to equate our numerator, where a need to time with this in order to get this function at denominator. For this px plus c, we need to time with x plus 1. Then we're going to find our abc. Let x equals to negative 1. For this, we will get 7a. For here, negative 1, it will be 0 because x negative 1 is the roots for this vector. And then a will equal to 1. Then we have to let for x equals to 0, 6 will equal to 6a plus c. Where our a is 1, so 6 equals to 6 plus c. So c will be equal to 0. 
then let x equals to 1. So 1 squared plus 6 is 7. 7 times a is 7 because a is 1. And then for this, it will become b plus c since c is 0. So leaving b and then 1 plus 1 which is 2. Therefore, we can get in our b as 5. Then express back your fractions in partial fractions. Where A is 1, B is 5, C is 0. Then only after we express it into our partial fraction, then only we proceed to our integrations. So for this question, we are going to integrate 1 over x plus 1 plus 5x over x squared plus 6 dx. So we can integrate it directly together or we can integrate it separately. So this is this integrate this function respect to dx, integrate this function respect to dx. So why I need to integrate it separately? Because I want to simplify my value of 5. So I factorize the value of 5 in order for me to integrate this fraction. So when I integrate this, please check our formula number 6. This is formula about fractions. So when the denominator part is fx, x plus 1, and I differentiate it, it is 1. Yes, this is f prime x, this is fx. How about this? When our fx is x squared plus 6, then when we differentiate it, this is 2x. I need a coefficient 2 for this 2x. So I need to times 2, then I divide by 2 in order to get the form of this is fx, this is f prime x. So please revise that. When we have integrate fx and above here is f prime x, it will equals to ln fx. This is our formula number 6. Therefore, for this part, it will equal to ln x plus 1. Then for this part, 5 over 2 will be ln to the function x squared plus 6 and then plus c. So that's our final answer. Let us look at one more example here. So when we want to integrate this x plus 1 and x minus 1, so we can test with my our formula with where fx is x minus 1. When I differentiate this fx supposed to be 1, so look like this question cannot apply our formula. So how do I simplify these questions? Before we go in to do our partial fraction, bear in mind partial fraction only for proper fractions. Look at the fraction here. Is it the proper fractions? Sim this is linear, then over linear, so this is not our proper fraction. Means that this fraction can undergo long division. So we have to simplify it. So we have to do this division before we're going to integrate it. So to get long division here, to divide this with x minus 1, we need a 1 here. Then our reminder will be 2. Therefore, our questions of these fractions it will be equals to where caution is 1, reminder is 2. After we simplify our improper fractions by division, then only we can integrate our fractions. Clearly, we can see that integrate 1, we can get x plus 2, I can factorize out to integrate x minus 1 only. So this will be equals to x plus 2 ln x minus 1. Formula number 6 y is ln x minus 1. So you can see when the denominator is equal to x minus 1, then when I differentiate it, it get 1. So it fulfills the criteria of the formula number 6. So that's all for this integration by partial fractions. Thank you for your time. Thanks for watching. If you think my video is benefit to you, don't forget to subscribe. Thank you very much.